Catherine Arnston, welcome to the Dr. Tina Show. I am so excited to have you here today. We have been going back and forth a little bit to get you on the show, and I'm so glad that you finally got on here and yes. you made the time. I'm excited to talk about uh, your product, Energy Bits, because I have been doing some research on algae for some time off and on, and I'm very excited to pick your brain today. You got it. Well, I'm all about algae. 14 years of research on algae. And you think, how can somebody become an algae expert? I, and But there you go. That is me. I'm <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. You know, I'll tell you a backstory real quick. My mentor who was my, I got my puppy on my lap for everybody watching on YouTube. My mentor was a naturopathic physician and a acupuncturist, a brilliant man. And he unfortunately passed away from cancer, but he was so interested in algae and he was always randomly bringing it up. And then I have a marine biology background. That was my oh, undergrad wow. was a focus oh. in, in marine biology. And I just think algae is so interesting. And oh. I have not been able to ever speak to an expert on it in the nutritional space. So this will be really fun. Yeah. 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 Well, everything that you ever imagined and more times a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Okay. So you are, tell us about yourself. You're the founder, CEO, and chief scientific officer of Energy Bits. And these are really cool little tablets of algae and spirulina yes. and spirulina and chlorella. Yeah. Yes. So and tell, tell me about them. them. But my, my backstory is that I'm Canadian, although I've lived in Boston 30 years, 30, 30, 33 years. And my background, I had an MBA and I was doing international business. And then 15 years ago, my younger sister in Canada, who I'm really close to, developed breast cancer. But I want everybody to know she did heal completely. And she's 12 years, 13 years now, cancer free. So, But as she was preparing for her chemotherapy, her oncologist, who happened to be a woman, Fortunately, because women tend to be a little bit more open to nutritional interventions, her oncologist told her she needed to change her diet to an alkaline diet because it would help with her healing. They didn't say, she didn't say exactly what it would do or what an alkaline diet was. So my sister called me, not that I knew anything about nutrition, zero, but I'm a good researcher and I love my sister. So I said, I'll find, I'll figure this out. It turned out to be a plant-based nutrition uh, diet because of the chlorophyll and the phytonutrients that have been proven to help build your immune system. And also... Uh, chlorophyll and algae in particular are very alkaline and your cells need to be slightly alkaline to ensure that they are healthy. There was a German scientist back in the 30s by the name of Otto Warburg, who won a Nobel Prize for discovering that cancer cannot exist in an, uh, an alkaline environment. So I think that was one of the reasons why my sister wanted her to have her, her oncologist wanted to have an alkaline diet. So anyways, I did research, she changed her diet, she changed her diet, she went through chemo. I started learning about plant-based nutrition, was stunned by what I had learned. And nobody was talking about it 15 years ago. So I gave up my a corporate career, went back to school, studied nutrition. Then I taught plant-based nutrition, trying to get people to eat more vegetables, found out that everybody knows they should eat more vegetables, but it was too much work or they gave them gas or there were arguments at the dinner table or they threw them out before they used them. So um, I thought, okay, I have to find something that's going to give people the nutrition of vegetables with none of the work or none of the downside but didn't know what I was going to, how I was going to do it or what I was going to find. But I looked at everything I'd found for my sister. And when I got to algae, that's when the miracle happened because first it's the most alkaline food in the world. So that box was checked. It's the most nutrient dense food in the world. We have a quote from NASA that says one gram of algae has the same nutrition as a thousand grams of vegetables, one to a thousand. And I'll explain how, wow. why, how that works, but it's, there's nothing in the world with more nutrition than algae. A lot of people think algae is just pond scum in their you know, swimming pool or it closes their beach. And wait till you, when it's grown carefully, as we do as an agricultural crop, it, there is nothing in the world with more nutrition for you. So anyways, back to the fact that it was alkaline, nutrient dense, endorsed by NASA, endorsed by the United Nations for 50 years wow. because it has the highest protein in the world. Three times the amount of protein at stake. There's 64% protein in spirulina. So that's crazy, right? It's been yeah. used in Asia for over 60 years on a daily basis because they grow it there as an agricultural crop. It's almost as big as the beef industry is here. And on top of that, there's almost 100,000 studies documenting some of the health benefits we're going to talk about today. 100,000. Wow. But the problem is 
scientists like to talk to each other. They're in different silos. And so none of this knowledge about algae being a therapeutic food, a nutrient dense food, not a supplement, used safely around the, in Asia for 60 years, endorsed by international aid, none of this has made its way out to the public. And the best part of it all, uh, which I, I saved to the, the, the last, was that um, the algae comes in little tiny tablets. They're about the size of baby aspirin. So here's a picture of, of what they look like. They're about the size, uh, like I said, size of the baby aspirin. This is the spirulina, this is chlorella. These are two algae that we're gonna talk about. Each one of these tablets has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables. Uh, an entire plate of vegetables. So while I'm talking to you now, I just had a plate of vegetables. <laughs> That's how easy it is. If you can swallow water, you can get the nourishment that you need instantly. So it's fast food. It's literally the future of food. So it is. I it's, that's it. I'm going to just tell the world about algae for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what got me interested because to be totally honest with you, I'm pretty meat based and I love beef and I feel like beef is a superfood as well. And mm -hmm. I had gone more towards a carnivore side of things for, I have gone in and out of that actually for long, long beyond the term carnivore. I will go more towards a more meat heavy diet and then I'll kind of come out and I'll play back and forth. And I don't do great on a vegetable heavy diet. The fiber is hard on my gut. I have some I have some more severe digestive issues, but a lot of I, people do. And that's why they aren't eating vegetables. Exactly. A lot of people and, go carnivore because of the lectins and oxalates and there aren't yep. any algae. Uh, so I was going to ask yeah. you, that's exactly what I was going to ask you, because that was one of the reasons my mentor was such a big fan of it. He was like, this is a superfood. And then you and I got connected and I was like, I'm so interested in this because I need some freaking vegetables in my body. I need some green food. I know I do. And I just can't bring myself to eat copious amounts of vegetables. So this to me, like popping a couple of these has actually been really much easier on my gut. I don't get any indigestion. I don't get any of the bloating. And I, I'm not saying this to like, you know, promote it. I just honestly, I was like, oh, this is so much easier for me as somebody who is not, I've never been a fan of vegetables. So that's, and I'm glad you came on because my audience has been asking me like, could you please somebody please bring someone on to speak more on the plant-based side of things. And I yeah. feel like we're omnivores and people really want to get into these like dogmatic tribes oh, on no. one side yeah. or the other and I'm hesitant to talk to my audience, and especially on Instagram or social media, where it's just like such tribalism. I'm so hesitant to pick a side. I am definitely more meat-based. I do love animal fats. I love animal protein, but we do need some freaking green food to offset what well, the just how this is broken down in our body and like I needed something easy so this really fit the bill for me and I'm going to show you some images to explain why everybody needs every single person in the world should be taking spirulina for sure and probably chlorella as well they do completely different things in your body and I'll I'll walk you through what they do. I say algae, algae's friends with everybody. <laughs> it doesn't pick any sides. Uh, and so there's no drama with algae. There's no, when I talk <laughs> about energy, it's not a spike because it's not a stimulant and it's not a crash. It's like putting a log on the fire, not paper on the fire like you get from stimulants. It's vegan, paleo, carnivore. It's ancestral. There's algae was the first life on earth four billion years ago. Nothing yep. is older than algae, nothing nothing and the, it's great for carnivores like i said it doesn't have lectins and oxalates those who aren't familiar with lectins and oxalates they're sharp proteins that are found in plants and particularly in uh nightshade vegetables like red peppers also very high in spinach kale of course every other vegans you know kale and spinach are a mainstay for them and same with almonds very high in lectins and oxalates now the plants develop these to protect themselves from predators, bugs yep. and, and animals, because they hurt, they upset their stomach too. But algae is not a land plant. It came from the ocean. So it did not have to develop evolutionarily lectins or oxalates. That's why Dr. Gundry, I've been on his podcast three times. He loves us because he too knows that, and he endorses algae, particularly ours. It doesn't have any lectins and oxalates. So carnivores, listen up. We need you to get some of these nutrients that are found in algae and it won't have any downside. There's zero carbs, by the way, if anyone's ketogenic. And if you're doing intermittent fasting like I do, there's it does not interfere with your uh, ketones, does not drop them and does not increase your glucose. So if anybody's diabetic, pre-diabetic, this is also for you. So um, 
it's pretty amazing food. I can walk you through sort of as a backdrop to what algae is, because we are going to do a deeper dive on the spirulina and chlorella. Um, yes, how please. One of them is particularly helpful for your mitochondria health, and one is really helpful for your gut health. But the backdrop is that algae is its own food category. It's tech, in fact, it's sort of in the plant category, but as you're going to find out, spirulina is not even a plant. It's a, what's called a cyanobacteria. It does not have a nucleus and it does not have a cellulose wall. This is one of the reasons why it's so great for you because there is nothing for your body to break down to get access to the nutrients. And so when I pop that one tablet in my mouth, I chew it. Most people do swallow the spirulina, but it gets into my bloodstream instantly because it goes sublingually through my gums. And so this is why it's such efficient nutrition. It's 99% bioavailable. But anyways, algae is a food category and there are two subcategories. One is called macroalgae and the other one is called microalgae. We're going to be talking mostly about microalgae today, but let me tell you what macroalgae is so you have the context. It's that big stringy stuff that washes up on shore, mm -hmm. also known as seaweed or dulse or kelp. Now, it's good for you because it has lots of fiber and also has iodine. But it's only from the ocean, which is why it's called seaweed, and it has virtually zero nutrition. Lots of fiber, zero nutrition, only from the sea. Microalgae is completely opposite. It is everywhere. It is in the sea, but it's also in the lakes, the rivers, the streams, the soil, your swimming pool. <laughs> and it has either no fiber or virtually no fiber and the highest concentration of nutrition in the world. This is because when you, it's called microalgae because it's microscopic in size. You could get a million microalgae on the head of a pin. That's how tiny they are. And it feeds the whales. It feeds all the fish. It provides 80% of the oxygen on earth. When you, you grow it like we do, there is zero negative carbon footprint. It is the most efficient food in the entire universe and very concentrated in nutrition. But it, when you grow it, as we do in fresh water, there is no iodine because it's not from the ocean. And there's also no toxins. Well, at least for ours, because we grow it in triple filtered spring mountain water. Here's a picture of a spirulina farm. And here's a picture of a chlorella farm. So it's we call them bits because they're bits of food that we grow hydroponically, like you grow lettuce or tomatoes in, in water. And then all we do is after we've grown them in the farm, we air dry it without high heat, which is really important. And I'll explain this in a minute. And then we press them into these little tiny tablets that we call bits that are because they're, they're bits of nutrition. There is nothing else in them. They're unprocessed. That means they're not treated with heat. That means they're raw. In fact, spirulina is a live food. So um, there's so much nutrition in each tablet. Like I mentioned, it equals the entire plate of vegetables. That's about three quarters of a pound of vegetables. Unbelievable, right? And so that's why if you swallow them, we recommend at least 10 tablets a day to get you started, a therapeutic amount, which would be if you have any kind of health condition, diabetes, heart disease, 30 would be what we would recommend. Or for a meal, if you want a meal, 30 tablets, which would be 30 calories, gives you all the nourishment you need for, and you wouldn't be hungry for five hours. There's so much nutrition. I'd use that quote from NASA that we sell them in these large bags of, of here's, a, here's a picture of them, of a thousand tablets. One bag of a thousand tablets equals 551 pounds of vegetables. Wow. So you can take a good 10 of them and not get the bloat. Cause that's what I honestly have been worried. I do like three to five at a time. And I'm like, am I, is it going to upset my stomach? Cause vegetables really can set me off. And so far so good. So it's because there's no, well, there's no, there's no fiber. fiber. Yeah. yeah. And then Zero. there's, yeah. Is there a cell wall or is that just, there's nope. no cell wall. No yeah. cellulose as well. Nothing. That's what I, yeah, Zero. that's what I thought. They, in fact, spirulina is the only thing that keeps uh, babies alive. And this is what they give them. If they can't digest mother's breast milk and they've tried everything to keep them alive and only spirulina in water will keep them alive. And even that, so this is, these are preemies. They, they aren't taking food yet because uh, it get, is so easily digested. Anybody who has any kind of digestive issues, spirulina is for you because it, it gets so absorbed so quickly and is so nourishing. Oh. It's very, what I call very efficient nutrition. It's pretty sweet. So spirulina generally is used for nourishment, for hunger, 
for energy, we fuel NHL teams, triathletes, ultra runners, Olympic teams. And that's why we call our spirulina energy bits, because it gives you energy in the moment because it has so much protein and it's loaded with B vitamins that convert the aminos into, into energy for you. But it's not the kind of energy you would get from a stimulant. And I help people understand the difference between the kind of energy you get, because this is cellular energy. Right. When you take coffee or sugar or caffeine or something, what's happening is just it's speeding up molecules between your brain and your body. And it's like putting paper on a fire. So you get a burst and then you get a crash. Spirulina is like putting a log on the fire. You might not even notice the energy if you're not doing anything, but if you're working out, you'll realize you can run further or faster and you didn't even notice it. Or you will think better, clearer, and you didn't even notice it, except you go, whoa, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> you just feel fresh. That's the best way I describe it for people. And honestly, I've been taking this stuff for 14 years and I don't know what I would live on if, I mean, I do eat regular food and I, like you, I love grass-fed beef and I love eggs. I stay away from chicken because they do stuff. Me too. To that's, chicken that's, is gross. Oh, you should see, there's movies that show you what they do to that. To yeah. It, there's slimy dinosaurs and they're full of bacteria. It's no thank yeah. you on the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say just just don't do it. <laughs> but um, so so I do eat real meals. I try to do one a day because I do the intermittent fasting, and I snack on these all day long. So there's no upper limit either. But so you get the energy in the moment, and, and later on when I want to do a bit of deeper dive into mitochondria, the, this also nourishes your mitochondria. Uh, it protects them and and improves the production of cellular energy, which is also known as ATP. And for those who aren't familiar with ATP or cellular energy, um, it's what propels everything in your body. So it's not just the energy you need to go run errands or go for a, a hike or something. This is that generates energy for your neurotransmitters, for your heart to beat, for your lungs to breathe, for your digestion to work. Everything operates on cellular energy. And as you get older, uh, and they're all cellular energy is generated by mitochondria. Mm -hmm. But as you get older, fewer mitochondria and you have more damaged mitochondria. I'm going to explain why that happens and how to correct it with algae, of course. So as you get older, you don't have the cellular energy to fight viruses or to heal from any injuries or you have just brain fog. And, and it's basically because your body isn't generating enough cellular energy to give you the life force. It's basically life force, if yep. you want to give it another term. And when you'll see from spirulina in particular, what it does is it rest restores that life force. I love an analogy I came up with. Think of your body as a building. And so when the building is built, everything's shiny and new and everything's working and uh, your body is like the building. And then inside the building are offices. Well, think of your cells like the offices, because that's where all the work takes place is in the offices or in the cells. Now, you can't do any work in the office without lights. And so think of your mitochondria as the lights that allow the cells to operate. Now, the good news is in a building, they have maintenance people that come in and change the light bulbs when they go out. But as you get older, you have fewer maintenance people. <laughs> and right. what happens is when your light bulbs go out, nobody's replacing them. And as you have fewer and fewer light bulbs, there's less and less life force or light to do what your body needs. And this is what leads to inflammation, advanced aging, and chronic disease, which manifests differently in everyone. It could be Alzheimer's, it could be arthritis, it could be bad digestion, it could be anything. But when you restore the cellular energy, because everything, once your everything in your body will grow back, then you can start to have that life force again. So my, I tell people, you know, spirulina is like, it turns the lights back on. <laughs> I love that. It's well, and you brought up the point too, that it's the nutrient density for the reason I was turned onto it by my mentor is because I do have digestive issues and I can't tolerate B vitamin supplements at all. They flush me. I feel awful every time I take them, even if I take them individually, I've tried literally tried every B vitamin by itself yeah. and multivitamins are out of the question for me. I don't think that taking an encapsulated 
ratio of specific nutrients forever is a great idea. I think I actually have always had an aversion towards multivitamins for various reasons that I won't get into, but I'm not a fan of them and I don't suggest them for people. So I do love the idea of getting something so nutrient packed and easy to digest and assimilate. That's always for me is like how easy food. Right. right. Exactly. Like, can we get, and I'm a big fan of food-based supplements for that reason, but even that, I just like the idea of something that is easily digestible as well and assimilating into it. That's one of the reasons I love beef is because like the forms of nutrients in beef is very easily assimilated into the body. And you don't find that a lot with a lot of vegetables. A lot of vegetables don't actually, the zinc in, you know, spinach, for instance, isn't going to assimilate as readily as the zinc from right. beef. But I think in the case of algae, from what I remember my mentor saying, and what you're saying is we are getting a, a much easier version and assimilation. So it, yeah. it just makes because life a lot not, easier. It's not just what you eat, it's what you absorb. Exactly. And so if you have uh, digestive issues that are preventing uh, uh, proper absorption, but you're stuck. Uh, I don't endorse a lot of supplements either because the reality is they're made from extracts that don't exist in nature that way. Right. And we are part of nature. Food is part of nature. And they're also made with heat. So in heat damages or deactivates or de decreases the value, nutritional value of things. So that's why I'm so proud that we don't use heat when we dry our algae tablets. So anyways, yeah, it's all about what you can absorb. And we've got people who've had their stomachs removed and they can still get the benefits of this because the absorption is so fast, particularly if you chew them. I tell people it literally bypasses digestion, but no, technically it doesn't. But anyway, so that's spirulina. And, we'll, and when we get, we'll finish up on chlorella so I can explain what- Yeah, yeah key points. And then I want to do a deeper dive into mitochondria, because if you understand how this, how your body works and how it, what it needs to perform optimally, it's so much easier for you to understand why algae is the answer. <laughs> and it's not a drug and it's not a pill. <laughs> it's just a, you know, a gift to us from mother nature. And so it works in conjunction with chlorella because spirulina, as I mentioned, is very good for your mitochondria health, gives you energy. And by the way, when we talk about mitochondria, you may not know this, why would you? But your brain has the highest concentration of mitochondria per cell. There's 2 million mitochondria per cell. The next highest is actually women's eggs and your retina, and then your heart, and then your muscles. The highest mitochondria are gathered where the greatest energy needs are. So spirulina is very much brain food. We know fatty fish are brain food. And a lot of that's because of the omega-3 that's in the fatty fish. And I tell people, well, where do you think the fish got the omega-3 from? They got it from algae. <laughs> so spirulina, because it's loaded with essential fatty acids, among other things, it's very much brain food. And also because it heals the mitochondria and there's so many in your brain. But switching over to chlorella, which is spirulina, by the way, was a blue-green algae because it has two pigments in it, a blue one called phycocyanin. And I'll tell you some of the amazing properties of that blue pigment. And the other pigment in spirulina is chlorophyll, which of course people are familiar with. It's a green pigment. Chlorella only has the green pigment called chlorophyll. Mm -hmm. It has the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world. That's why it's called chlorella because of the chlorophyll. It has 500 times more chlorophyll than arugula and 25 times more chlorophyll than liquid chlorophyll. Nothing in the world with more chlorophyll than chlorella. So I tell people, well, if you're taking chlorophyll water, that's great. But this has 25 times more, plus you get protein and 40 vitamins and minerals. So don't cheat yourself, uh, you know, up level to chlorella. But chlorella is a different kind of algae. It does not satisfy your hunger, does not give you energy like spirulina does, but what it does is it builds your immune system and pulls out toxins. Remember I said spirulina has no cellulose wall, which is why it's absorbed so quickly. Chlorella has the hardest cellulose wall in the plant kingdom. And that hard cell wall attaches to heavy metals, lead, mercury, radiation, aluminum, glyphosate, pesticides, spores, microtoxins, uh, alcohol, lactic acid, and pulls them out. So it's a chelator. You yep. don't need activated charcoal. And while it's doing that, it's also injecting 40 vitamins and minerals into your body. It has the highest glutathione in the world. So it's very much a cleansing and detoxing algae. So that so it's very much a wellness algae. And be, it also builds your immune system because it has all the nutrients that your immune system needs and of course, 80% of your immune system is in your gut. Um, 
chlorella, it had that hard cell wall has fiber in it. So it feeds the gut biome, those bacteria, the short, um, the fiber it needs to make short chain fatty acids, which also help with the health of your gut. So it's very much a gut oriented algae, healing algae, detoxing algae, cleansing algae, whereas spirulina is a nourishing, energizing brain algae. And while we're talking about chlorophyll, you may already know this, uh, Dr. Tina, but chlorophyll, the chemical composition of chlorophyll is ident virtually identical to the chemical composition of your hemoglobin. For up until just even as, as recently as World War II, when if they ran out of blood for transfusions for the injured, they would give them liquid chlorophyll because wow. they would heal just as fast. Uh, it builds your blood. But our soils are so damaged and our ozone layer is damaged. Our vegetables, doesn't matter whether it's arugula or any kind of greens, simply does not have any medicinal quantity of chlorophyll in it anymore. So your only shot is chlorella or spirulina algae. So this is why carnivores, I want you to pay attention because you're missing this really critical nutrient. By the way, chlorophyll kills bacteria. I have a lot of carnivore friends and one of the things I've noticed is they tend to have bad breath <laughs> um, because a lot of the meat gets stuck in your teeth and then it gets attracts bacteria. It's the bacteria that's causing the uh, scent that is not terribly attractive. So chlorophyll kills bacteria in your mouth, in your colon, anywhere in your body. You could actually use it on, on an on a injury, in fact. So very, very cleansing. Uh, you may not uh, know this also, but chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. I'm going to show you a picture. This is I did this experiment 25, 30 times. I put some spirulina in a bowl with water, and this beautiful blue color, which is the phycocyanin, would disperse evenly through the water. Then I would do the same thing with the chlorella and see how it clumped. It wouldn't disperse beautifully like its brother over here, spirulina. Oh, interesting. I finally figured out what was going on. Phycocyanin, the blue pigment, is a water-based pigment, which is why it disperses evenly. This is also why phycocyanin is very healing to the lymphatic system, to the blood. But chlorel chlorophyll, turns out, and you can Google this, is a fat-based pigment. So it fat and water don't mix, so it clumps. And the reason why I want you to know that is because chlorophyll builds your cell walls which are fat-based, they're as much as an omega-3 or a D3 does. So it's very healing to the cell wall, as well as building your blood, because it has a very similar chemical composition. And it also, because it's so alkalining, it protects your bones. Because when you have too much of an acidic food, and a carnivore diet is very acidic, your body knows that it needs to, uh, and your blood needs to be slightly alkaline, 7.34 on the scale of zero to 14. So your body knows that it can't have acidic blood. So what it does is it pulls minerals out of your bones or your organs or your cells to neutralize too much acidity. It does it automatically. But if that goes on for a very long period of time, it leads can lead to osteoporosis. It can lead to uh, other kinds of diseases. A lot of people get gout uh, or kidney stones because that's too much um, uh, lactic acid building up or calcifica calcification, because because you get a lot of calcium buildup. So so spirulina or chlorella will neutralize that acidity and help you avoid those kinds of situations. So chlorophyll is very nourishing, but if you're not eating vegetables, and most carnivores aren't, <laughs> chlorella or spirulina could be your solution for sure, and not give you any of the downsides of, of vegetables. That's why I like it. That's honestly, yeah. that was why I was like, yeah, I'm interested in this because that's it. I was like, I know I need the nutrients in this and I am not getting them if I'm too meat based and avoiding vegetables. And yeah. I'm, a la I'm a lazy cook. <laughs> I don't love preparing vegetables. I don't even like going to buy them. The whole thing is a headache. I know. I know. What I, I, You're not I know alone. What, yeah. It's just, it's like, that's, I think one of the reasons why people do love that carnivore lifestyle. Cause it's just so easy, so but easy. it takes a lot of choices out of it and you don't have to flavor things. And not that I don't love a good, well-cooked vegetable dish when I go out, but then you're dealing with potentially, you know, seed oils oh. and all that jazz. Oh, so I know. I know. I you know, it's, it's like uh, wa guacamole or what's it when you know, whack a when yeah. you to eat, it's like any, any issue. Yeah. Do you cook with seed oils? Is is organic? You right. know, I don't want any dressing because we know that'll have seed oils. It just takes the 
of fun out of eating. And but if you get a nice, good grass fed piece of fillet, you're good to go, right? <laughs> so yeah, I, that's my favorite. Yeah. yeah, yeah Can so, I ask you a question about the absolutely. chlorella? Absolutely. Because it is a chelator, and for the folks listening at home, chelation is where you pull heavy metals out of tissues, predominantly fat tissues. Fat yes. likes to bioaccumulate, and your brain is made of fat. Your nerves are made yeah. of fat. Chelators I've always used really slow and low. With you were saying, you know, people can do upwards to thirty tablets a day. Do you find that with chlorella, uh, that is something we use to chelate? And, and in my past, is that something that you would suggest people maybe ease into a little bit? slower than the spirulina or is, um, does it not seem to be an issue? Well, it's, it's interesting because if you just want the wellness be benefits of chlorella, you know, the chlorophyll and all the other uh, phytonutrients that are in there, 10 tablets a day would be sufficient. Same with the spirulina, 10 tablets of the spirulina. However, for chelating purposes, you're going to need a minimum of 20, preferably 30, because, and there's a, a doctor by the name of Dr. Klinghardt, who's a very mm -hmm. big fan of chlorella, and he's in upper, up in the northwest corner, and he says the same thing. If you don't take enough chlorella, what happens is it attaches to the, you know, the toxins, and it can't pull them all the way out. So, so what happens is it actually extends the detox symptoms because you're not actually chelating them. And so them and trapping you want them. to hold on to them because once you get them into your bloodstream, so you may have some detox symptoms, which would be stomach distress or some headaches or some breakouts, but it's not the chlorella that's causing it. What's happening is the toxins have been dislodged from the organs, the cells, or your, and they're moving on their way out. And then you get rid of them through sweat, breathing, which so those are great. Exercising is great. Yep. Um, urine and bowel movements. So yep. we work with a lot of red light therapy and sauna and biohacking and cryotherapy. And so in general, we recommend actually that they take the spirulina before the treatments because it gets absorbed so much faster than the chlorella. But then they take the chlorella after the treatments as sort of like the cleanup crew to get rid of all whatever was dislodged through the cryotherapy or the red light or the sauna, the, the chlorella will go in there and pull it out. And we generally recommend if you're doing those treatments, take the full 30 tablets. Now, okay. the good news is chlorella actually tastes pretty good. And I pair it with uh, pistachio nuts. I don't know whether you eat nuts or not, but yeah, that's fun. There's a, a brand I like. It's salt and vinegar flavor. There's a couple of brands, but one's called Wonderful. You can just get it at yeah. Amazon or Whole Foods or whatever. And oh my God. And for keto people, you'll even love this even more. It tastes even better with macadamia nuts. You think you're eating potato chips. This is like the best ever. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I'm going to, yeah. that's, a, that's yeah. a great idea. I have so, to tell you a fun fact before you, we move on. My mentor who passed away, he, he was mentored up by Klinghart. And oh, you're so, kidding. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. I, I'm from Portland. So, I mean, oh, that's gosh. where we were practicing. So, oh, yeah. Wow. So, it was like Klinghart, then my mentor, Dr. Marinelli. And then I, there's so many things I've learned that I have learned later on came from Klinghart that I didn't yeah. realize at the time. Wow, yeah. You know, yeah. So, he's, fun, he fun fact. Stuff. And he's been doing this for 35, 40, 40 years. And he says exactly the same thing. You, you've got to take enough. Now, for the detox, just so people know, and I tell people, if you don't believe me, just try it. If you take the 30 tablets, you could try 20, but 30 for sure. After you drink any kind of alcohol, wine, beer, spirits, doesn't matter. You will be sober in an hour and a half and you will never have a hangover because what happens is your body converts the alcohol into various toxins. And so the chlorella notices the toxins and it pulls it out of your bloodstream in an hour and a half because your blood is very porous. It will take a week or 10 days to pull toxins out of your cell structure because the, they're denser. And then for your organs, it would take, it can take anywhere from one to six months. So it's all about the density of the cell structure, but your blood is very porous. And I don't drink very much, but I do like a couple of glasses of wine every once mm -hmm. in a while. And we've had people tell us we saved their bachelorette party at uh, <laughs> in Vegas or something because they were the only ones taking the chlorella. And uh, so because it's generally a wellness algae, so you don't notice it like you do the spirulina. But if you ever, you know, want to take it for a test drive, that, that's a way to do it. Or take it after a workout because it will pull the lactic acid out. So your muscles aren't as sore the next day as well. So it's a post-sport algae as well. <laughs> okay, this is good information. This is yeah, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's they're like having child prodigies. It's like, what else do you 
do you do? It's just crazy <laughs> what this stuff does. And the science has been around in many cases for a hundred years because I was, somebody was asking me, well, if it does all this great stuff, and this is what took me so long, I've been doing this for 14 years, but I was by myself for the first four or five, because again, I didn't have a science background and I was reading all these things that it was doing and that this can't be possible. If it would did so much, why don't people know about it? Well, here's why. 99.9 of algae is grown in Asia. None of it is grown in America. So in Japan or Taiwan, where we grow ours, you can't ride your bicycle to school or take a train to work without driving by an algae farm. Here we see either wheat farms or corn farms or tomato patches or raspberry patches, no algae. So right. you just didn't grow up with it. And there's no incentive to teach you about it because it can't patent it. So the biotech companies weren't interested. It's And it's actually the way you grow it is more dependent on and how you dry it is more like making wine. Very complicated. Chlorella is very complicated crop. Spirulina is not as much. So it's not easy to grow here. And so anyways, that's why you don't know about it. There was nobody uh, incentivized to teach you about it. And, you know, I'm sort of, a lot of people didn't know about collagen powder until about 10 years ago when Vital Proteins came on the market. And they, and it started because the founder had joint problems. He was a runner and his daughter was in medical school and he kept, he was in his forties or fifties and his joints were hurting. And her, his daughter said, well, I think it's because you're missing collagen. You need more collagen as you get older. So he started researching and thought, I'm going to, I'm going to create a collagen powder company and ta-da. So, <laughs> so there's lots of nutrients uh, like bone broth. Bone broth has been used by oh, indigenous forever. peoples forever. Chia. Chia seeds been used in South America forever. I drink uh, yerba mate. It's the national drink of Argentina. And, uh, but so these are all things that have been around for centuries in other countries, but nobody, you didn't know about it until somebody took the initiative to bring it to you and educate you. So uh, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm kind of educating people about the benefits of algae uh, because somebody has to. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why I wanted to have you on. I was like, I need to get an expert on about this because this is a, this is an easier way for me to get my veggies and Tell me, uh, if you will, about the cleanliness of it. I mean, I'm actually glad it's not grown in the United States because the United <laughs> States is like Monsanto capital of the world. So, well, probably most of the planet at this point. Um, are, are these algaes bioaccumulators at all? Do they tend to not? When you look at CBD, for instance, you know, hemp is a bioaccumulator of heavy metals. And so that's something I've always wondered in the process yeah. of growing it. How does that well, work? Well, there's a couple of people online and I'm going to write them individually. And Dr. Weil has posted an article about this and I have refuted every point in his article. I have a lot of respect for Dr. Weil, but this article is just flat out bad science. So these articles are talking about how spirulina is toxic, has microtoxins in it. And so, yes, if it's from the ocean, <laughs> But right. we grow ours in triple filtered spring mountain water. It took me two years to find a company that tests for mycotoxins. And of course, we don't have any because there aren't any in our pristine water that we grow it in. So you and so it's like if someone went to a swamp and pulled a glass of water, it was really brown and dirty and said, you shouldn't drink water. Look, look. Right. So you can't take these tests that have been done on algae that came from the ocean and unilaterally say all spirulina is toxic. If it came from the ocean, you can be darn sure it is. And if you don't grow it carefully, there's a pretty high chance that it is. So I can't speak for the industry. I can only speak for what we do because what um, we're the only algae that I'm aware of that's sold nationwide through doctor's offices because... I only started this company to help my sister. I wasn't even planning on starting a company. I just wanted to help her. And so when I started realizing I was creating a company, um, everything, every decision I made was based on the priority of people's health, not would this make me more money. And virtually all other companies that do sell spirulina and chlorella, um, they sell anywhere from five to 500 other supplements. I'm not going to name any brands, but it's just one more supplement to them. And they don't right. pay the attention or they don't that I don't think they even understand what they're actually selling. And there's not the care given because they're not aware of these nuances like I am. This is all we do. This is all I spend my time on. So 
for us, there is, there's no bioaccumulation of toxins because of the processes I have put in place and the testing that we do to ensure the nutrient density and the, and the, the um, efficacy of, and safety. And one little thing I'll tell you about just to show, point that out is so chlorella, as I mentioned, has a very hard cell wall. And if you don't, and it has to be cracked at production or your body cannot absorb the nutrients. So the FDA many, many years ago regulated that all chlorella sold in North America, in America needs to be cracked cell wall. Now, in other countries, you can buy uncracked, but I don't know why you would because you can't absorb the nutrients. Now, the original technique to crack the chlorella cell wall was developed by a company I have a lot of respect for called Sun Chlorella. They were the original chlorella company in the world. And they developed this technique, which was to tumble the chlorella with glass beads. And this is the technique that virtually everybody in the industry uses except us. The glass unfortunately heats up and two things happen. Some of the lead from the glass leaks into the chlorella and also it's heat. So when you have heat, you damage some of the nutrients. So when I started the company, I, th I thought, well, that's not going to work for me. And fortunately, a more expensive modern technique had just been developed. And that's what we use, which is we pass the chlorella through a sound chamber. And it's the vibrations that pressurize and crack the chlorella. Wow, so that's no cool. lead and no heat. Yeah, and I'll be able to tell you more about that in about another year. There's some really cool things going on regarding patents and stuff. But anyways, that's, that's how cool. we crack our chlorella. And so it took me extra time to figure that out and ensure that, you know, we had something that was particularly safe. So that's one of the, one of the sort of attributes. And so the other thing that's very, very important to understand, and this will get us into the segue of talking about mitochondria. Um, there are nutrients found in spirulina in particular that aren't found in any other food in the world. One of them is the blue pigment, which is called phycocyanin. Mm -hmm. And the other one, um, well, there's a number of antioxidants, but there's one called superoxidismutase, which um, is critical to protecting your mitochondria. So there's another really amazing nutrient that's found in spirulina that is the most important, I think, in terms of protecting your health and uh, from declining with chronic illness or advanced aging. And what it does is it's this uh, antioxidant called, it's got a, it's a long one, <laughs> superoxide dismutase, also known as SOD. We'll just refer to it as SOD because that's easier to say. And so the reason why it's so important is that it's one of the few antioxidants that can get into the inner membrane of the mitochondria to protect it from free radical damage. I'm gonna give you a little science lesson here. Here's the cell. And in the cell, you have your nucleus and these little peanut shaped things are your mitochondria. Now remember, there's 2 million of these per cell in your brain. Now inside the mitochondria, this is where the ATP is produced. But what you no, no doubt wouldn't know, a byproduct of ATP are free radicals. Mm -hmm. And your mitochondria have their own DNA. You wouldn't know this either. There's only 37 of them compared to 22,000 regular DNA. So your mitochondria DNA are exactly where the free radicals are being produced as a byproduct of, AT of the ATP. So your mitochondria DNA, which by the way, control everything in your body. They control the other DNA. They control cellular communication. But because they're constantly being bombarded by free radicals, their lifespan is an average of about 10 days. Your regular DNA lasts a lifetime. And so as they get fried by these free radicals, they either mutate or die. And the good news is when you're born, your body makes this SOD naturally, just like it makes melatonin and makes glutathione. But the downside is by the time you hit 30, like a lot of things like melatonin, your body slows down it, making it. And by the time you're 40 or 50, you have virtually zero superoxide dismutase any longer because uh, superoxidismutase is what protects the mitochondria from all those free radicals. So imagine yourself in a rainstorm, a torrential rainstorm. You're okay if you have an umbrella to protect you from the rain, right? So up until the age of 30, think of this superoxidismutase as like a big umbrella that's protecting your free radicals or your mitochondria from all these free radicals. And then suddenly at the age of 40, somebody rips your umbrella away. 
Now you're exposed. There is nothing that you can do to protect your mitochondria because they have an inner membrane that most antioxidants cannot get inside. All your cells have a simple a lipid membrane around it and mitochondria do as well, but they also have this inner membrane and most antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, drugs, nothing can get in there, but superoxidismutase can. And so can glutathione and so can chlorophyll. And guess what? Algae has the three highest concentration of those three nutrients. So now your mitochondria can be protected from free radical damage. So that when, and so now they can be restored. Now they can grow back. Now they can have more lights on <laughs> in your building. And so now you're generating more ATP. Now you have cell, more cellular energy to fight those viruses, to think faster, to have better digestion. Everything works better when you have more ATP, more cellular energy. It is the key to life. It is, it is really the life force. Um, and so I tell people, you know, I, I never eat alone. I always eat with my mitochondria. And <laughs> The problem, and this, uh, Dr. Tini, you'll appreciate this. The thing that creates the most free radicals in your in the mitochondria are c processed carbs. Yeah, processed carbs. They're killing you. <laughs> well, if you don't have to go full keto, just cut them out as much as you can, because a, either a keto diet or a carnivore diet, anything that's re we're talking processed carbs. So that's you know breads and pizzas and muffins and sugar and glucose uh, laced drinks, get rid of them. Uh, that alone will give you extra years and help stop that rainstorm of free radicals. And algae or intermittent fasting are the best for reducing your number of free radicals. There's virtually no free radicals that are generated from intermittent fasting or from algae. It's very, very efficient. And it also stimulates autophagy and apoptosis, which is the healthy cell death, which you want. So it's like having the cleanup crew, getting rid of all the garbage in there. Yeah, so getting rid of the zombie cells. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. But I want to tell you why the mitochondria have that inner membrane that is impervious to virtually other antioxidants or even drugs. And it's and you're going to find this fascinating. So. Remember I mentioned at the very beginning that algae was the first life on earth about 4 billion years ago, and it was yeah. a cyano cyanobacteria. It was a single cell organism, anaerobic cell, because before algae, earth was just gas and water, no oxygen, no life. Nobody really knows what that this first little cell started growing, but it did. And it was a cyanobacteria like spirulina. Remember I said spirulina is a cyanobacteria. Now it generated energy because it generated ATP and so it releases oxygen uh, on earth. So a billion years later, now there's oxygen on earth. Oh, now aerobic cells could grow and they were bigger, but turns out they didn't generate as much uh, ATP as the, as the anaerobic cell. So I can imagine the conversation between the two, the big cell and the little cell. The big cell says to the little cell, hey guy, I see you're struggling there. How about we join forces? You come and generate ATP for us and we'll protect you from the oxygen because you're an anaerobic cell. That's basically what happened. So the anaerobic yep. cell got absorbed by the aerobic cell, but they didn't digest it, it coexisted. And that original cyanobacteria became your mitochondria. And yep. that is why there's an inner membrane because that first membrane never disappeared. It just got covered by a lipid membrane. And so it makes complete sense to me why everything in algae is completely helpful and can penetrate the mitochondria because they're basically family. <laughs> that When you said it earlier, so I did a, you're going to crack up. When I was an undergrad, I wrote a paper about this, about mitochondria being bacteria. Oh my God. And I always bring that up at conferences and people are like, what? Like medical doctors, you know, are like, what? Yeah. So this is, when you said it's a cyanobacteria, I was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a different, yeah. that, makes, that makes more it's sense really to me. It's really interesting. Now this whole, it's called endosymbiotic theory. It was developed developed by an MIT professor, a woman, I live in, I, I can, I live in Boston, I can, I look across and I see MIT right here. In the 60s, she came up with this theory of evolutionary history. And she was ridiculed by all her colleagues for 10 years, and then they realized she was right. So if you ever go into PubMed on the history of mitochondria, 
everything talks about this. It's all reinforced over and over and over again. And somebody asked me again, this feeds into why don't more people know about the health benefits of algae? Because the scientists and medical professionals tend to be in silos of their particular expertise. Mm -hmm. This is why holistic healers are so important because, you know, they tie mind and body, but they don't know what I just told you about algae being the pre, you know, the precursor to your mitochondria. They don't know so that algae has the highest superoxide dismutase in the world. And there are 25,000 studies in PubMed documenting how SOD has been proven to stop inflammation, heart disease, Alzheimer's, everything proven, but they don't know that it exists in spirulina. It does have, there's some in chlorella as well, but the highest is in, in spirulina, at least in ours. And here's the other thing I forgot to mention. Superoxidismutase is an enzyme and enzymes are deactivated at 114 degree Fahrenheit. So once again, the companies that sell lower priced algae use high heat to get to market quickly. So they deactivate, the high heat deactivates the superoxidismutase. So you it's like shooting blanks. So maybe it was there originally, but it can't be uh, used for medicinal purposes if it's been deactivated. So interesting. It, right, exactly. And I've got papers that, you know, document that. So <laughs> Well, and what you're what you just mentioned, aside from the phytocyanidin, is that people take SOD as a standalone supplement. I know I have for years, just plain old SOD as a supplement, and I've taken tons of glutathione as a supplement. And these are not always cheap supplements, especially the glutathione. So to get it in a real food source is appealing to me. Yeah, and there's different. Um opinions about whether it actually gets, gets absorbed because it gets damaged through uh, glutathione in particular and also SOD in digestion. But again, because spirulina is a bacteria, no cellulose wall, it, like 99% bioavailable, gets into your bloodstream in seconds if you chew it and minutes if you swallow it. So it doesn't go through that digestive process and get damaged. We're working with lots of IV drip people and companies. And so when people are coming in for glutathione drips, where they're going, they're selling them the spir, giving them the spirulina tablets at the same time, because the glutathione drip is great, but it, the half life is short. You know, after right. about an hour, the benefits are all gone. So if you're constantly feeding glutathione to your to into your bloodstream, you can deepen the benefits and extend the period of the benefits. So I don't take any medications. I don't take any other supplements. I'm 67. Uh, this is wow. all my own hair. And so I'm living proof that this stuff works. <laughs> and I had no idea. That's amazing. Your goals. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm twice as old as like anybody who works for me. And they, they figure out, I, well, I'll tell you my other key is sleep. Yeah. Sleep and algae are the two magic pieces to longevity. Me and Dave Asprey, we're going to live to 120 or thereabouts. <laughs> or, or Dave John Johnson, is that his name? The guy's doing Oh, all yeah. The Brian Johnson guy. Brian Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Dave plans on it too. So yeah, you all yeah. three be there together. Well, <laughs> and that Brian Johnson guy. So here he's got lots of money. So got knock him, you know, good on him. He spent so far over the last three years, about $5 million dollars. Uh, just about a thousand things. And, and he's, and he claims he's knocked a, maybe a year or two off his biological age. Well, let me tell you something. I work a lot. I go to a lot of these biohacking shows and a good um, a company I really highly regard is a company called brain tap. They do, they have a head device that um, with, through sound and meditation and lights, it relaxes your brain. Uh, it helps you, um, uh, and actually, when your brain is uh, is relaxed, you absorb nutrition better. Anyways, what they usually do is they take people, uh, they do these, uh, they have some biomarker tests that they do. And then they usually, they take your test, then they put you on their little device for 20 minutes, and then they test you again to see if your biological age uh, was reduced. And it always is. It always is. It's a great company. But for me, they said, let's do your biomarkers, then go have some of your algae, then come back an hour later and we'll test you again. So I had the equivalent of two pouches. They sell for $6 each. So I had two pouches, so $12. I waited an hour and I knocked 30 years off my- Wow. My biological age is 30 and I have the paperwork to prove it. And I am 67. <laughs> so 
Brian Johnson, I'm, I'm throwing up the gauntlet. You <laughs> waited five years, spent $3 million and took a year and a half off your biological age. I spent $12, waited an hour and I knocked 30 years off my age. So let's have a challenge. <laughs> I think he's also admitted to using his son's blood to be transfused into him to which is just creepy in its own right so yeah i'll take the yeah. i'll take the spirulina yeah yeah <laughs> well there's no contraindications it's good for any age children it's great for kids give them one or half a one for their age so if they're four give them two a day ten give them five a day pets absolutely love them I, anyone who has parents who are in nursing homes or, or assisted living homes, please give them some spirulina. It's one tablet that probably gives them more nourishment than they'll have all week. Yeah. And it, you know, I had a mother who was, who she's passed away, but she was in a nursing home. It just, it just made my, it just was so sad to see what they were feeding these people. And there was, you know, the, you know, they, and they were just ghosts wandering through the halls because they had no energy and their minds weren't weren't alert so um so anyways it's really uh it was it's a gift to us from mother nature um it just needed but here's the thing like we all want the fancy the shiny object right we don't think something's going to be good for us unless it's the newest thing it's technology right. and and there are great things out there like i just mentioned brain tap but so algae is just like this old stuff that's been around and nobody really knew what it was. So I kind of had to give it a facelift. I design all our packaging. I, I tried to make them really appealing. Here's our canisters that come with a little open. I love your canisters. It's so adorable? easy. I love, I love my canisters too. Yeah. So, so anyways, we're just trying to help people. Sometimes, you know, uh, it's like, certain societies revere their elderly and we're not one of them apparently, but no, yes, he is old, but it's been, it's still here. It's been around, got made it through ice ages. It just needed to be explained. And I can't take any credit for algae. That's mother nature, but I can take credit for growing it safely. It's got preserves the nutrients that have all these great therapeutic benefits. And we do testing and we educate you. <laughs> I, no, I love it. This has been, this is helpful. This is really helpful. And just speaking back to the elderly folks, you're so correct in that. And also it's really difficult for elderly folks to start absorbing their, or they lose the ability to absorb their food. Well, they lose their dentition, they lose their appetite. They often lose their partner. And so they don't want to eat alone. And it's just a really terrible downhill yeah. descent yeah. that I see in their brain and their stomach and their heart health and just all of it. It's really tragic. So anytime I can beef up and I took care of a lot of lovely elderly folks that I inherited from my mentor. So anytime we can beef up their nutrition in a simple way, I think is a big win, especially something that's very affordable because I, I see a lot of my elderly patients would be taking piles and piles of supplements and they'd buy every new supplement that came out. And I'm like, we just need to get some really good nutrient dense food based yeah. nutrition into you. And, and that's, you know, easier said than done, but not all of these supplements, like you said, you only benefit from what you absorb and yeah, they're not yeah. everyone's get, especially if they're in a vegetable capsule, you know, it's like, Oh, it's, it's, yeah. it's a tough one. So I like the idea of a tablet that's going to. A lot of people when I, our website is energybits.com and it's where we sell all the products. We have a great blog and we have a 20% discount code for your community. It's Dr. Tina, uh, no dot in between it, no space, just Dr. Tina. Tina. And I mentioned that because the, a, a bag of a thousand tablets is normally $130 and people go, you know, they're going to have sticker shock. <laughs> but when you get the 20% off, it brings it down to 104. Now, remember a bag has the equivalent of 551 pounds of vegetables. And to put it in better context for you, if you took 10 a day, which is what we generally recommend, it works out to a dollar a day, a dollar a day for your yeah. health. And I, I did the math. <laughs> yeah. When you're taking this, guess what? You can cut out a multivitamin, a fish oil, a CoQ10, a biotin, and probably some other stuff. You won't need as much. You won't need vegetables. Your grocery bill will go down. So it's very efficient nutrition. It lasts. We have to put an expiry date on it. It lasts three years, but quite honestly, it never goes bad. What vegetable does that? And your kids, you don't have arguments at the dinner table anymore. Kids and men are notorious for not wanting to eat vegetables and you're <laughs> carnivore or paleo maybe you don't want to eat them either so just swallow a handful of those the, the chlorella tastes a little bit better most people do swallow spirulina so don't feel no shame for that 
But honestly, a dollar a day, and you couldn't live on this forever. It's so such a complete n- nutrition. In fact, I saw a chart recently, well, not recently, a couple of years ago, and it broke out all the amino acids in mother's breast milk. And I thought, well, that looks awfully familiar. And I pulled out our chart of amino acids. Same amino acids in the same proportions as mother's breast milk. And we know that mother's breast milk is the perfect food. So, and because this came from mother nature, I say this is mother nature's, you know, breast milk for us. Wow. Now, that's it's, interesting. It's really, I'll, I'll, I'll send that, that uh, article to you that I wrote. Um, Cause it's, it's, when you start to dig into the, if you lift the hood and you keep going, it's like, this is crazy, but it's true. <laughs> it's really interesting. It's funny. You mentioned husbands. So my husband was pretty stoked to go carnivore because he could just eat steak and beef all day and be fine. And he's actually the cook in the house. So I, you know, once vegetables were out, we were, and I was healing from some IBD flare. So I was, I was the one that instigated it. Anyway, we get these in the house and I'm terrible about taking my supplements. And I was like, okay, babe, you're going to do this. And I know I shared this story with you off air, but I want to share it with the audience. Cause I was like, you're going to take this every day. And I gave him the little tin cause the bat, it came with a little tin. Yes. So he, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he put it in his, around. he's got his igloo cooler that he takes to work every day. So he's got the tin in there and he comes home a few weeks later. I don't ask him anything. He comes home a few weeks later and he's like, you know, I've been taking this every day and this is some pretty good stuff. Are you going to get some more of this in? And I said, yeah, sure. We'll get you some more. And then he's like, I really like this. And then a few weeks later, he's like, are you going to have this lady on your podcast? Cause this is really good. Like I really, my energy's going up and I, I feel better. And I was like, okay. And this guy is like an old grumpy farmer and he doesn't ever give me feedback on supplements or he doesn't respond. It's rare that I can get like a response yeah. out of him with a supplement. It's rare for me to even feel a response, but you know, we take a lot of stuff and we're like, is oh, this doing anything? So it was good feedback from him. And so then I started actually being more diligent about it. I'm only uh, to be quite honest with you. I'm only a few weeks in and I just got over being sick. So I don't know yet, but he was really cute and yeah. he's sold on it. And he's like, okay. this is he's in, but good, we have, good. we've not done the chlorella. He was just taking the spirulina. So okay. it'll be interesting to see once we mix the- well, he'll, you won't get colds. We've had mothers give this to their kids at the end of the school year. This is pre COVID. The teachers would come up to the parents and say like, what is it that you're doing with your kids? Like they're the only ones in the school that didn't <laughs> have colds this year and pets, they have the same illness as humans do. So you'll notice the energy, the mental acuity. And again, it's like putting a log on the fire. It, there's no drama with algae. It's very, I call it steady eddy. You just feel alert. You don't get those, that fatigue, that, you know, that those crashes that you do if you aren't eating properly or exercise, it's just part of life. This balances that all out. With the chlorella, you'll just notice that you don't get colds, things clear up better if you're losing weight. They both help with losing weight. Spirulina satisfies your hunger and gives you nourishment because of the high and the essential fatty acids. It also cuts cravings. Most cravings are because you're missing a particular nutrient. Mm -hmm. But the chlorella helps as well because, as you mentioned, your body stores toxins in your fat. Mm -hmm. So because chlorella is pulling out the toxins, your body will go, huh, guess those toxins are gone. I guess I don't need that fat anymore. So it helps release uh, the fat. Um, by the way, it also stimulates um, peristalsis, which is um, bowel oh. movement. People, people hate talking about this, but the reality is medications cause to constipation. White processed foods cause constipation. Travel causes stress. Co- there are so many constipated people out there. Nobody wants to talk about it. Chlorella is your answer. And this is why one of the reasons why we recommend it. You can take it any time of day, but definitely take the chlorella before bed. I didn't mention this earlier because when you sleep, that's when your body goes through a detox repair cycle. And chlorella also has something called chlorella growth factor, which speeds up the, the growth of your cells. But while you're getting your beauty rest, you've got the scrub-a-dub team in there, the cleanup crew, getting rid of toxins in your brain, getting rid of senescent cells and the high chlorophyll it it stimulates a bowel movement in the morning. So um, very, very helpful for getting rid of any kind of issue there. That's great. There's a lot of, and then you mentioned the GLP-1 agonist, which I talk a lot about on my podcast. I'm actually, that's a whole other story. I won't go into it for you, but I have found other applications that are really amazing for GLP-1, but it does slow down your peristalsis. And I think that that's- Because there's no food in there. 
there's no, <laughs> right. there's no food to push everything around. Yeah. So having anything on board that can, well, and, and for everyone, you're right. So many people are dealing with horrific digestion. Patients would come in and be like, I haven't pooped. I poop every three days. And I'm like, that's not normal. We, we yeah. need to be doing at least one a day, if not two at, at the very minimum. And so yeah. anything that can support peristalsis, because if you lose peristalsis, you get small bacterial overgrowth, small intestinal yeah. bacterial overgrowth, and people don't realize that. So like, we got to be pooping people. And that's any, anything that can stimulate the poop is a, I'm a fan of. Yeah. And also because chlorophyll, only 10% of it's actually absorbed in your stomach. The rest of it travels through your liver and down through your colon. So I only mention that because if you're taking a lot of the, either of the algae, your poop might be a little green. It will look dark. <clears throat> Don't panic. I'd say it's a badge of honor that your poop is green. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, put, I eat so many blueberries. I, mine is already like a weird blue color. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dark, dark. I love my dark. I love anything with a lot of pigment. Anything oh, yeah. with a lot of pigment is healthy in my opinion. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you touch <laughs> on really quickly just the cognition and brain benefits? Cause I, and then collagen and beauty. Cause I was just actually speaking at the biohack your beauty event or. Oh, oh yes. We had one of my team. I couldn't get there, but one of my team members went there. So yeah. And she mentioned yeah. there was beauty bits and I was like, what? So yeah. I didn't realize that there was a connection there too. So can you speak on those real quick? Yeah. So on the brain health, <clears throat> as I mentioned, the, your brain has the highest concentration of mitochondria in, in any of your cells. So anything that's going to help support, protect, restore your mitochondria, that's where you're going to see greater benefits or the first benefits. We have Alzheimer's patients who couldn't figure out how to turn the microwave on. And within literally 48 hours of taking spirulina, everything, the lights were back on. And it's not just, so it's protecting the mitochondria. It also, um, the blue phycocyanin protects the telomeres from shortening. A spirulina is loaded with essential fatty acids. Your brain is mostly fat. Well, the highest concentration of fat, it's 20% fat. And the numbers aren't that high, but it's a combination of the omega-3, the DHA, the, and it has something called GLA, which is technically an omega-6. But uh, when you have GLA or an omega-6 and it's not heated, it behaves like an omega-3. So it's also anti-inflammatory. And if you have any doubts about that, the only place that has more GLA, which is an omega-3, 6, is mother's breast milk. And mm -hmm. the reason why there's so much GLA in mother's breast milk is because the baby's brain doubles or triples in size in the first couple of years. So the spirulina is really great for brain health <clears throat> because the protection of the mitochondria, the protection of the telomeres, the high fatty acids that are there. And so those are the, the main attributes for that. On the beauty side... <clears throat> So here's what happened. When I launched the company, I had one spirulina, which was the blue package. I had one chlorella, which was recovery bits. And we have another brand called Vitality Bits, which is a blend of the two algae. But I noticed women were not buying the blue packaging. And I started the company because my sister had breast cancer. So women's health has always been big. So I asked my girlfriend, I said, why do you think women aren't buying my spirulina? And they said, you got to make it pink and give it a cute name. So, <laughs> and then I found out spir spirulina has more collagen in it than collagen powder. Oh, interesting. And of course your skin is collagen and your hair is elastin. So, and it, it has all sorts of attributes. It protects your elastin as well because it has K2 in it, which removes excess calcium. Oh, K2 is great. Is K2. Yeah. Almost everybody in the world is in North America is deficit of K2. Yeah. So, so I came up with beauty bits. <clears throat> I'm not trying to trick anybody, but it's identical <laughs> to the, the blue packaging for spirulina. So I, I, I often refer to my brands as my children. <clears throat> and these are my twins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a girl okay. Spirulina and a boy spirulina. Got it. Guys tend to like this one. I'll send you some, we'll send you some more product. We'll make sure that your husband has his own spirulina. <laughs> can do it, the beauty bits. And honestly, women, and this is the one I have on my countertop is the beauty bits. Cause it just makes me happy. I, I designed everything as I, I, and I wanted them to be vivacious and, and energetic because the algae, once it gets into you, that's what it does. This, so this was as visually as powerful as, what the algae does inside, but that's what the beauty bits are for. So 
and it satisfies your hunger and helps weight loss. And women tend to want to focus on skin and hair. It's great for your nails, again, made of, of collagen. So you, your, your nails will be stronger. Uh, your hair will grow faster. Guys, you'll get haircuts twice as fast because because you notice that when you have short hair, your hair will grow much faster with the skin. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, good. I wanted to ask about that because I was like, oh, do tell more about yeah. the beauty yeah. bit. So yeah. So it's beauty from the inside. It's an inge- what we call ingestible beauty. The true beauty. I won't belabor this too much more, but there are lots of very expensive facial creams that have been around for 20, 30 years, like La Mer. La Mer is a little jar is five hundred dollars. <throat> and the secret ingredient are is extracts from algae. That's what <laughs> and so the thing is, you know, you're going to spend $500 and put a little tiny bit on your face. But if you take algae and you ingest it, it's going to help all of your body, including your face. And it will, it, it brings the nutrients through the bloodstream to your skin. Some molecules can't get through the skin because they're too, too large. A lot of collagen molecules are actually too large. So this is nourishing you from the inside. <laughs> okay. No, I say that all the time on my podcast, like the true beauty is from your health. Yeah. You can't replace that. You can't have beautiful skin by applying creams and balms and serums all day. They can help, but if you're not taking care of yourself and you're not yeah. nutritionally dense, then you're, you're it's going to start to show. That's actually, to be totally truthful with you, most of the folks doing carnivore, they start to look aged and people who do keto too long, it really starts to age their face. And I was starting to experience that. And I was like, I, that's when I was like, I, I got to get some vegetables in here because I am. I it's showing on my skin, no joke. And I was, I didn't know what to do the thought of eating a plate full of vegetables just sounds like an instant stomach ache. So I was really glad to get these in the mail. I promise you, you will not have any problems with spirulina and probably not with with the chlorella either. So I haven't yet. So yeah, yeah, no, this is awesome. Okay. Well, is there anything else that we need to cover that I haven't asked you about? Well, I just want to assure people that algae is not new. It's just new to you. And it's sad that it hasn't been explained to you. On the other hand, at least now you know, and now you can't unknow. And it's just like a lot of things. You have to get high quality, whether you're talking beef or shoes or leather, houses, doesn't matter. There's a range of quality. And at a dollar a day, we're knowing a company like ours, I've made every single decision on this company. I've kept venture capital out. Uh, we're self-funded. Uh, we have a, uh, a very dedicated group of people. Uh, we really care. So uh, I want you to know that if you start taking this, I do promise you, you will feel a difference. It just, because the reason why people are getting sick is they aren't getting the nourishment that they need and there's too many toxins in their system. Spirulina fills the nutritional gaps and chlorella pulls out the toxins. So it's the perfect combination and it's effortless. If you can swallow water, you can get these in the benefits without stomach ache, shop, grocery shopping, cooking or cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. This has honestly been fascinating. I learned a lot today. Uh, there was a lot of review too. So my background's in biology I and cellular biology, more importantly. So I, that's really what I geeked out on. And then w- in marine biology. And so I, to hear this kind of come full, you brought a lot of things full circle for yeah. me. And well, I have, I can geek, I could geek out even more. I didn't want to geek too much because <laughs> I didn't want to scare people on the electron transport chain, but maybe another time because it's, yes. it's, the more it makes complete sense. It, nature is so brilliant. Our bodies are so elegantly made, but it's like taking a Tesla and parking it in the rain on a beach and, and letting it just sort of fall apart. You, you want to, this is it. We get one body and we want to nurture it. And, and, and if we give it what it needs, sleep, movement, sun, nourishment, love, it will carry you a very long way. <laughs> but um, we've fallen into bad habits. And, um, but you can always change. And the thing I like about algae is, is a lot of things when people are saying, well, you, got, you can't do this and you can't stop to eating that and stop. This is something you can add you, if you did nothing else and just added spirulina and chlorella, you would still see benefits. Uh, um, and maybe it would inspire you to make um, some deeper changes, but it's the easiest effortless addition that you could make to with the biggest impact. So that's why I love it. 
small change, big impact. <laughs> no, I love it. Absolutely. Tiny, tiny but mighty. That's what I, how I describe it. <laughs> yeah. Like you, and, you're, you're tiny, but mighty. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I've been told this. <laughs> I've been told this many times, you know, adding foods into is always a good strategy. As a physician, I try to get people to add in the goodness before I start taking things away. Because when you right. add in nutritionally dense foods, you feel better and everything starts to make sense and your instincts come on. And then you start to realize what you need to pull out inherently. Your instincts right. tell you. So I'm with you on that. Uh, if you do nothing else, you know, get, I people know, my followers know, like eat nutritionally dense food. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's what matters. So, Whole oh, food. I love this so much, Catherine, this has been so helpful and yeah. insightful. So the website again, and tell everybody where they can find you. Is it, is that the predominant place to yes. go? Energy bets, E N E R G Y B for boy, I T for Tom S for Sam. And even if you don't want to buy anything, we write a blog every month with lots of science references. Just come and read the blog. And if you do come to the website, you can buy anything. We have canisters. You can see all the canisters, boxes, bags. Use the discount code Dr. Tina for 20% off. And if you aren't ready to buy a big bag and you're still on the fence, that's okay. Just go to Amazon. You can buy single pouches. They have 30 tablets in them. I don't have any here. They're $6. So buy a couple of those for $6. Check them out. Make sure you're happy with the results. And then come back to the website to get that 20% discount code. So, And we're very active on social. Our handle is at Energy Bits. Uh, we actually have a special one for Beauty Bits as well. Same with Facebook. So, but the, the website energy bits is the main, is the main place. So where all the action is. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'll make sure yeah. to get all of those on the show notes. My puppy has jumped back in my lap again and is staring at me longingly. I know I'm going to start feeding. Well, I was telling you off the air, he's turned into such a beast that he's the biggest one of the whole litter. Cause he's a farm dog, but now we're going to pop him up on some spirulina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they'll love it. He'll love it. I promise you. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking right. the time to educate well, us you. and come on the show. Yeah. yeah thanks. My pleasure. And we'll get you some more bits. So uh, you you and your husband can keep rocking and rolling. <laughs> I know it's, we're trying to stay hot and happy in our, yeah. as we oh, age. Oh, so. there you go. Wow. <laughs> it's great for those, those occasions too. <laughs> love it. Thank you, Catherine. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>